So there's me making a video yesterday on my final thoughts on Battlefield 2042 before launch day, and then a DICE developer comes out and comments a little bit on the specialist topic. Good timing, eh? Yes, you did hear me correctly. A DICE developer has briefly commented on the specialist debate. The comment came as a part of a Twitter thread where a DICE technical designer responded to concerns about Pike's EMGX scanner, which has alarmed quite a lot of people in the last few days by providing this one button push wall hack ability that is said to have a duration of about eight seconds, lighting up any enemy that happens to be obscured by cover in the nearby area when it's activated. Now, the developer said that DICE is already on top of the feedback that they've received from that trailer. They're not confirming or denying that any changes are happening, but it is clear that the message from the community has been heard by the development team. Now, even before the latest specialist trailer dropped, DICE have already shown that they will make changes to the specialists when they get feedback that they feel is impactful. They've already removed that ranged revive ability of Falk's Siret pistol, during the technical test earlier this summer, you could revive players with that pistol from quite a far distance away, and a lot of players felt that that was way too powerful to have an ability like that. So DICE ended up removing that element of the specialist, and then during the open beta, the Surrette pistol was only able to heal wounded friendlies at range and also provide that self-healing function. Now, considering how alarmingly powerful Pike's scanning ability appears to be, I wouldn't be surprised to see DICE make some changes here after initial feedback when seeing it in action in that trailer. For me, the duration of that wall hack scan, whatever you want to call it, is far too long. And the range at which it was revealing enemies seemed to be quite far as well. So if I was the one making changes here, I'd go for a duration and a radius reduction on that scan. Now, since specialists clearly aren't going away from Battlefield 2042, bringing them all into line and trying to balance them accordingly does seem like the best option for launch at least. After launch, who knows what DICE's plans really are. We do know that they are adding four new specialists as part of the live service for Battlefield 2042. One new specialist is going to launch in each of the four seasons that DICE has committed to for the first year of support for this game. Specialists, as I've said before, they're not going anywhere. They are a core part of Battlefield 2042 and I don't expect to see them disappear at any point in the future, but I would be surprised if we don't see the same kind of tweaks and changes to the specialists along the way, like we would for any other Battlefield game that includes weapons, vehicles, and all this kind of stuff. It all gets tweaked all of the time, so I think we can throw specialists into that group now. They will be tweaked and changed over time to make sure they remain relevant and remain balanced as well. If you were hoping for specialists to completely disappear, well, I'm just going to rain on your parade. I don't really think that's going to happen. So it might be best that you just stick to Portal. And then that way you don't have to have specialists in servers if, if you don't want them there. Now, also yesterday, we got to see a new Battlefield 2042 trailer. Although it's not like any of the other trailers that we've seen so far. It's not a gameplay trailer. It's not even like a proper in-engine trailer, I'd say. It appears to be some kind of CGI rendered production trailer. And it's been made as a TV advert for the game. Now, tonally, it is completely different to the trailers that we've seen so far, and clearly it's been made to grab the attention of a very different type of audience, one that's watching TV and is watching adverts that last 30 seconds in between their programs, rather than someone that's going to search out the latest gameplay and the latest information and trailers on YouTube. It's kind of like a light-hearted trailer. It's kind of cool, but it didn't really reveal all that much, if I'm honest. What did stand out, though, is the inclusion of bridges that appear to be able to be raised and lowered on the Kaleidoscope map. We've got a reference to YouTube Gaming built into the trailer, so maybe there's some kind of partnership happening here between YouTube and Battlefield for this game, so that will be quite interesting. And then there's a brief glimpse of what appears to be a new sniper rifle for the game, although, unfortunately, I don't have the name of it at this time. It just looks different to the one that we had in the open beta. Outside of that... The trailer has had a kind of polarizing reception from the people who have watched it. Around 50,000 views on it with likes to dislikes split nearly 50-50. The video is unlisted on the Battlefield YouTube channel. And according to Adam Freeman, the lead community manager, it's being hosted there as unlisted. So it can be used for people to host on news websites and things like that. So pretty much the audience that have watched this trailer on YouTube 
are not the audience that the trailer was intended for. So I can I can kind of see why there's a polarizing reaction. But likely this one won't actually launch as a trailer at all for the game. I fully expect to see some sort of much more in line with other trailers trailer launching with the launch of the game. Probably like a gameplay. Yay, we finally launched trailer around mid-November as we close in on that 19th worldwide launch date. So that's about it for today. Just wanted to keep you all in the loop on Battlefield 2042. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Drop a like if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one.